Well, hello and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. Because you can tell that because it says Carla Garrett <laughs> right there. It certainly um, does. And thank you for tuning in this week. Um, hot. Hot. It's going to be thunderstorms this afternoon. Yeah. I've already taken the dog I, out. Yeah, I did. I was going out to, I was, before we started taping, I was saying I went, my plan was to go out early this morning. And by early, I mean like, you know, 830. And mow my lawn. Um because I'm hosting Matt Mayberry at my house on Thursday night. So oh, I've got to, you okay. know, I've got a checklist. I got to mow the lawn. I got to clean the deck. I got to do all these things. So I thought, oh, I could get that done before I jump in the shower for, you know, to come here. Yeah, my mower won't start. I have issues with mowers. I'm just going to go buy a new one. I'm going to buy a new one and I'm going to buy a battery operated electric one. Fun. And I will report back if it works as well as a gas mower because I have no patience for engines. Isn't it wonderful though that we have are, options? There's yeah. like endless options in mowers. I mean, you were saying that they, you know, they have like the back wheel traction yep. now and like all this stuff. It's amazing and, how many know, different mowers there are. We we have Everyone seems down and people seem no, to complain about great. everything and stuff. But, you know, I just want to remind everyone back home, life is actually pretty good. Well, the market has provided. Oh, my God. Did you see with, the numbers? Uh, John DePietro, I think it was, I assume, because he's usually the one that posts things. Um, he posted the economic recovery graphs from, like, all sorts of countries. Yet yeah, the United States recovery from covid economically is way ahead of most places it's you know it'll be interesting to see what one of my main concerns with um uh, with the sort of uh, uh what are these bailout yeah things funding these is stimulus that, and all this stuff you know we basically have th there are going to be two options right so either we're going to end up in an inflationary situation where basically your money becomes worth Less, less and less, yeah. right? Um, so and that puts more a and more strain. to buy things. Yeah, and it puts a strain really on people who are on fixed income, mm -hmm. so are elderly at home and stuff. That you know, so inflation, while they call it a invisible tax, you know that is what it is. So suddenly you're like, oh, I just can't buy as much right. with this hundred dollars. I used to be able to buy four bags of yeah. groceries, now and now I can, I can buy get... two bags exactly. of groceries. That's one thing that can happen. The other thing that can happen is we just go into this sort of deflationary death spiral, yeah. <laughs> like Japan did. You know, no one talks about the economy of Japan anymore. No. But you know, I remember from the '80s. Yeah. That's when I was in, uh, in primary school, high school, maybe. You know. And people were like Japan, the competition with America, and everything. You don't never hear, about hear that those anymore. stories anymore. You never anymore. hear Japan. And the reason is why you never hear about Japan anymore is their economy has been limping along for the past thirty years yeah. because they did what we are currently yeah. doing. They printed a lot of money. They did these bailouts. They tried to, you know, just be like, hey, we could just hand out money to everyone. It'll be fine. Which, no. you know, quite frankly, you have to think, Where is it coming? how is that possible? <laughs> this is just math. Like, how, how how can we just, like, print money yep. and give it to people yep. and there's no consequence? So with them, they basically created these, uh, they call them zombie companies, right? Mm. And it's these companies that have been propped up that is a long way of saying with our American, uh, you know, recovery, and especially here in New Hampshire, right, where we're so focused on small businesses, yeah. um, you know, you want to make sure that the, the viable businesses are coming yeah. back um, and that there maybe is going to be a bit of a reset on on businesses that, you that know, That weren't really very viable. I mean, I read this all the time when I, you know, people because we the headlines are always so slanted now you know some from time to time you hear oh this store is closing and you're like yeah but they filed for chapter 11 before the virus yeah so they were failing already right. and struggling yeah, and then it's like this the jc penny or, or the macy's or, uh, or pier the... one or you, you know. know and and i mean you also have to wonder how much stuff do, do we, we <laughs> there's a crazy amount of stuff i mean just literally just the lawnmowers seriously there was i i have endless opportunities and like okay people might say well that's lawnmowers i don't need a lawnmower I to live okay when you think life is bad and you're complaining because there aren't all the choices in paper towels that you're used to <laughs> or all the choices in toilet paper that you're accustomed to Listen to what you're saying. Right. All of my toilet paper choices aren't there. I don't have a whole aisle to choose from. I only have a half an aisle to choose from. So we live in a, you know, we do live in a somewhat privileged society where even the poorest of the poor still have options. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
I, I will say this. I was down by the river today, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, you know, on the west side near the ice rink, the Piscataway Trail that yeah. goes from Manchester, where, you know, I live, all the way to Goffstown. Four more tents. Yeah, I don't get this. Um, I don't get why we're okay with this. I, I You know, I... You know, I mean, I was talking to a lady. So first of all, I get really irked when it's like, oh, wow, you actually set up your tent on like the beach where everyone who uses this trail, who pays yes. their property taxes, brings their dog to, you know, take, to, to hang, hang out. Right. And so, yeah, I understand you were like, oh, this is a really nice yeah. spot. I'll just, you know, set up here. Well, you know, that's kind of rude. Right. Um, the one tent, and, and don't get me wrong, I stop, I when, you know, if I see people out and about, I actually stop and I want to talk to right. them because I, I know want the story. to I want to know the circumstances. Like, you know, why are you here? On one previous show we talked, uh, you know, I talked to a guy, he was in his mid-20s. He said he would be, you know, he was anticipating he would be out of there in the next three weeks. Right. It's been three months. Is he still he's there? still there. Right, so he's Their lying. Their campsite is, uh, is not as clean as it used to yeah. be. But, you know, one of the new tents I saw today, and I'm so torn about this. It is. Um, Isn't it had, frustrating had how a, much it, the, the, the... Had a really neat little tent. It had, you know, it had built a little screen for where the trash is. Yep. But they also had, like, solar panel lighting, you know, Wait, how on, on a path going in. And I'm like, okay, okay on perfect. the one hand, I'm like... I like that you are at a minimum, you know, being self self respectful enough yep. to yourself, right? Like, I mean, no one wants to be living in a tent no. on public property. I'm gonna assume, I don't right? know. I'm beginning to wonder if some people. I mean, aren't is okay it okay with is, living is it in a, a tent on public property? Well, you know, so that's the question: Is it a lifestyle choice? Right. Um, you know, d definitely we see more people during the summer. So I could see maybe, you know, I mean, this guy I talked maybe to. Maybe he's he saving said, up his money. You know, he originally said, well, you know, I don't have money for first and last month. Okay. You know, but well, how I many months does it take when you're living in a tent and not paying any rent to come up with? Because, well, there's that. And it's also like how, um, how much money and services and waste is going into this. You know, like I was trying to crack some numbers last week. I think I read that they did a, a citywide Manchester City survey and they found 153 homeless people okay. who weren't in, in uh, you know, in, in one of the homes, right? I would guess, this is a guess, but you know, we probably spend five to eight million. Right. What do you think we just on put, homeless people, right? right? Couldn't we at least in, start by putting them in apartments? Well, yeah. So I'm just curious where I'm like, okay, yeah. who's, where, where is this money going to? Because we do see that, that, that the problem is getting bigger, it appears, right? It is, like we yes, are getting more think. homeless people. Yes. And from an economic perspective, uh, and we've talked about this in the past, whatever you subsidize, you get more yes. of, right? So when, when we talk about how we think, you know, life should work, which is you should be personally responsible and then people should voluntarily help you if, you know, if you need help, right? And everyone does. Sometimes time things time, go wrong. Some, yeah. And so, you know, we're not selfish, mean, uncompassionate, horrible people. We are actually saying that the best way for society to function, I think, is when you take that personal responsibility yep. where you say, I am me, here's my unit, and how do I function in the world to be better? And so before this, you know, you were talking about, you know, the, some of the homeless people that we see in downtown Manchester. That have been there. This isn't somebody who's just stumbled along and stopped to take a nap. It's the same people who've been there literally for years. Maybe not every single day, but pretty much. You know, like... And so, and, and, and so, and, I, it, and it is a deterrent. I'm sorry. There are businesses who are paying property taxes and their business thrives off of people coming to our downtown to spend money, especially now to eat outdoors. I'll be honest. There are not very many places open for lunch that are serving outdoors in downtown Manchester. That science today, that seems kind of crazy. I mean, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a little early, but by the time we leave, there's not, you would think that there'd be a little bit of a bustling um, outdoor seating lunch crowd in Manchester, and there isn't. And is part of it because who really wants to eat 
and you say I shouldn't say this all the time, next to the lump of homeless people on the sidewalk and on Elm Street. I mean, I will say this, you know, I've I've uh, traveled all over the world. I've I've lived yeah. in third world countries. I grew up in a third world country. Um, and it is shocking to me that we we're seeing this sort of decline in New Hampshire, right? And I think it is once we sort of try and shift from this more market-based personal responsibility model to to socialism. Yeah. And you know, people think socialism sounds good because it's like, well, oh, we've got this get, magic money everybody gets and the then same. we're just going to give it mm. to everyone. But really what you're doing is you're just instead of creating an aspirational society where we're saying, let's all try and like get better you're really just lowering everything yes. right and so here in new hampshire where we did not see these kinds of challenges and problems the economy is actually strong and good right, right? generally speaking so the question then becomes why are we getting more of this? Because we're, and it's like, well, well if you're it, giving people handouts and telling them it's okay I to mean, do you, drugs and lie on the sidewalk, you're probably going to get more of that. The cynic in me, because there is a big cynic in me, says, what about this? There are, there is a slice of people, people who make their living working for nonprofits that their job is to work with the homeless. They don't get a bonus for solving the homeless problem. If they solve the homeless problem, they're, out of, they're a job. out of jobs. So the incentive. So there's this backwards incentive mm -hmm. to keep funding organizations to work with the with, and it's not just the homeless, to work with any entity that ultimately if they succeed, that job has now gone away. So dare, dare I say that might be actually at the heart of why government keeps growing? Well, so you know, like if government actually, so so like when we compare government to the market, mm -hmm. right? So so if let's say you have a a, a broken pipe, yes. right? So when you pay someone to come fix it, his incentive is to do it quickly, quickly and, and efficiently, so that and you get pay it him done, money and he leaves. And, right? So if we have a war on drugs and we have a war on poverty and we have a war on all these things, wouldn't, shouldn't we have like, I, I mean, we have, we have spent billions, trillions of dollars. Shouldn't we have won one of these things or is it? Is it because, not supposed to have a win? Is it not supposed to solve these problems so that we can, you know, create this reason for this middleman? I mean, really, the government is just a... It's, it's just a middleman kind of going, it, like, uh, like trying to register where you're oh, trying well, to register saying, your car. So we bought... A, Dan and I bought a used truck. I should say Dan bought it. And we bought it. But, you know, it's in Dan. The title was signed in Dan to Dan mistake number one so we bought this pre-covid like just when this was happening like two weeks before shutdown right so this truck sat in our in our parking lot in our driveway for a bit and then we took it over to the garage and we told him you know take your time because we're not going anywhere as we have another vehicle finally we could pick you know i mean we had a work done on it which we knew we get back to um now it's ready to go it's been ready to go probably for a month yet yeah registering a vehicle is now is a nightmare so when dan <laughs> registered his motorcycle while we were on shutdown whilst the dmv or uh city hall was closed it actually was easier he i i think it was still p ridiculous he had oh, a like you could do he it had a drop off. he did parts online and then he has to drop off papers and then they email you and then it you know it was this back and forth now for the truck he went online to figure out like okay so i need to do this and he, what the first thing that bugged me is he's email. He went to DMV, filled out that part. They say now you need to contact the city, the city office because that's where you pay your tax. So that has to come before plates, right? So he emailed them on a Monday. It took more than a week to get a response. Which personally, wow. I'm sorry. I realize that there's you know over a hundred thousand people living in Manchester and all this good stuff. I see zero reason why it would take a week to get an answer back as to what the amount due to the city is. So we all, you know, we need to give them like $160 or some crazy, right? We, okay, fine. Dan go, goes out the other day. Dan works from home. He can't just endlessly take time off. He has actual work to do. You know what this is like. Right. Louis works from home. He go, gets on his motorcycle, 
drives to City Hall the other day, posts a picture on Facebook, the line from the tax collector's office, which is in this part of the building, went all the way down the hall and all the way over to the city clerk's office. Now, granted, there's social distancing, so the lines... Why is that line so long? He's like, I can't stand here for a couple hours. And I'm thinking, why is it still long? And that day before we had gone to the dump, because God knows the dump isn't open on Saturday mornings every week. So we had to take time out of Dan's busy work day to go at lunchtime to bring two old windows and a lump of cement to the dump and spend $33 to dispose of these because I don't believe in just leaving them on the side of the road like other people do. So we get to the dump as I per knew would be. And there's, you know, six or seven cars in front of us, all non-commercial vehicles, by the way, because that's what people always say. Well, the dump's open during the day because it, deal it, it caters to businesses. Yeah, these were all people with stuff that they were bringing to the dump. Wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. There's five, six cars behind us. We do the loop-de-loop -loop around the dump 10 times because nobody knows where we're supposed to go. The 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 window at the, at the little scale house Okay, is there nobody who knows anything about efficiency? Because why does the guy come to the window, do stuff, then have to go over here, and then come back to the window, and then disappear? Okay, maybe put the computer monitor where he can see out the window in there. The government, oh, goodness, you couldn't oh possibly God. be saying you would want something to be efficient. So, needless to say, Dan's truck's still not registered. Wow, I think I'm, oh, really? Well, yeah, because he doesn't have two hours to stand there, and I and it has to be him. It can't be me standing in line. I could stand there, but it's not my name, so I can't. And I'm like, I just want to give somebody a hundred. But surely, but surely, like, I mean, if we've pretty much the government why was, was that, shut that's down, normal. so why? I don't. I mean, know. and no one was furloughed. No one was, but you know, even I don't know. So, so are people not at work weren't they supposed to know. like catch up on all the old stuff and and like it should be just super efficient right now? Don't know. All I know is it's incredibly frustrating because we are back to normal. Um, you know, we work our jobs. Dan works, Dan never saw a dip, Dan works from home. Nothing changed in his yep. life. Um, I just wanna give the city money. I just wanna give you Sam money. If somebody <laughs> at City Hall can figure out how I can give the freaking tax collector money and get a sticker for our truck so that I can drive the vehicle that I purchased and put money into, I really, really appreciate it. So it is very frustrating. Um, it'll be interesting, speaking of government and how things will or won't work. So come election time, absentee ballot requests. Yep. Like people need to understand that this year, there are added reasons why if you do not feel comfortable going to the polling location on primary day or election day in November, you can actually um, request an absentee ballot from the city clerk's office and use COVID as your reason why. And so you can go to, it's Manchester. ManchesterNH.gov. And if you do forward slash city clerk, but it's probably right there on the first page. It it, it actually isn't because I went and yeah, looked Because they made a so, new website so, so, so that doesn't, that did not become any more helpful. helpful. Anything, I, I was actually did. shocked. I was like, oh, this is new. new. And then I was like, oh, it's wow. Worse. you. It's worse. Managed to like not it's make it It's almost like better. they've got a bunch of fluff <laughs> and not direct. I just want to be able to find the things I need. I don't um, need to hear about the downtown or our people or I our mean, history. I mean, I understand, you know, maybe they're trying to, to you know. Economic uh, development? Or I don't yeah. Know. Meanwhile, I, mean, I just need to know where the hell to go. So if, uh, gonna... Yeah, it's ManchesterNH.gov. And then there's a little tab that does talk about elections. And you click that one. Yeah. And then there's another tab from there and whatever. So it is, uh, you know, you, you have to look a little bit. Maybe they'll start to put it on the front page yeah. as they realize um you know that that there's going to be a demand for it but definitely you know if you if you obviously would love to earn your vote folks back home but um you know for this primary it'll be tuesday september 8th and uh you know if you don't feel comfortable leaving the house get that absentee ballot and send it in make and it I'm easy on yourself i don't want to say that i'm 100 percent sure but i usually can retain knowledge so i think i read did you see the thing where they're now saying that if you have to mail it, it's a poll tax? The, it is the postage. <laughs> Here's the thing, folks. If you want to choose to not go to the polling location, then you can choose to mail or fax or drop off your absentee ballot at the city clerk's office. 
You can do that by yourself now. Of course, there might be a line because, you know, City Hall. But you can get an absentee. As soon as the absentee ballots become available for the primary, you can take that and go right to the city clerk's office and get it yourself. You don't have to put a stamp on it. So, no, that's not a poll tax. Um, <laughs> I did think it was yeah. funny, though. I was like, wow, you know, I, it's just... The people, everything. There's just everything. I, I do think... I mean, can't we just make everything in life free? Why can't that be it's how it free. is? Should all be Tammy? free? Like, you um, know, like, I do think I read, so and he, I will clarify, but I do believe I read that if you file, if you vote absentee, and then decide that you want to vote in person. You can vote, I think it's in the first hour that the polls are open. And then what would happen is they'd cross out Tammy Simmons and you'd probably have to tell them that you voted absentee. See, and I mean, then they're gonna pull your, cause they, they, when you vote absentee, just so you know, you fill out a form, absentee ballot request. That you can get online. That's what you'll download. That, that's what you, I was talking That's about. what you yep. need to get back to the city. You can fax that back to them. You can probably take a picture of it. I mean, our city clerk is pretty good. They will get a ballot to whoever wants a ballot. You get it off to them. They will mail you, or you can do this in person at City Hall. They will mail you your ballot. You vote. You put it in a sealed envelope. I believe you have to... Maybe they did away with the signature. They used to check signatures somehow along the way. That went away. But then you get it back to them. Those ballots See, I'm, don't... I'm not convinced that this whole system is not fraught with... You know, my dad there, would always say to me, you could either be a, 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 a lawyer or a criminal. So I picked lawyer. It has but, potential for abuse. But, it really but, does. I mean, honestly, like I was, I, I was reading in the Sunday paper, they had this whole thing. And I was like, but what would stop you, right? If you have... So you have uh, paper sheets here and here with names on it, right? Yes. And so when I go to Ward 11, where I live down at Gosler, and I go in and I'm like, I'm Carla Garrick, and then they cross out yeah, with you a know, pencil the name line because that's on the in thing, the law, right? But who's comparing that list? How 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 do I know? How, how can I know not you didn't go the, but, Well, that's what I'm wondering this year. Normally, normally, if I'm not mistaken. Once you vote absentee, you can't vote in person. Like once they've checked you off the list, you're off the list. That's but this year I think they're doing it differently because mm. I, I that's one of the downsides to voting ahead of time is what if you change your mind? I mean it's great to vote so you don't have to go to the polls, but what if the day before you find out that the person you voted for is awful <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, can I have a redo? So. Oh. I don't know. Here's what I think. If you're worried about catching COVID at the polling location, if you're worried about the poll workers, whatever the case may be, put your mask on, bring your hand sanitizer, go get your ballot, fill out your dots, drop it in the machine, put your hand sanitizer, get in your car, take your mask off. I do not think you're going to get sick at the polls. No, I mean, you know, it, I just it, don't it, think if you were. Hey, we went the whole show without talking about COVID because that was what our happens. goal was. That was like, can we just week? not talk about masks and dead people and not dead people and, uh, you know, all that stuff? Um, what else do I have on here? Lines at City Hall, lines at the dump. Unemployment changes this last, the the unemployment checks that people were are receiving this week in, here in New Hampshire are the last of the inflated ones by the federal government. Although the federal government's talking about doing another stimulus package, but at least that, I think they're limiting unemployment benefits to $200. It still shouldn't be a flat number. It should be based on what your actual prior earnings were. But, you know, who am I? Um, so I'm, I will speculate what, once that again, unemployment can we also numbers just will drop say, significantly in the next two weeks. There is no money, people. All of this it's just a is shift. It's a shell game. debt. So it's kind of like, you know, if you're, if you're like, oh, well, you know, we should, we should give out all these bennies to everyone, but you're just putting it on a credit card. Yeah. And that credit card has... Comes due eventually. You, you know, is it going to come due? I mean, that is the question, right? Like, what is know. going to happen? About? Where does it you know? come? I, I try not to wrap up. Well, head. that's why when we started the show, I was like, well, here are some of the scenarios. Either there's going to be inflation or right. there's going to be deflation. But something's going to happen that you might not be able to put your finger on yeah. that is going to actually make 
the reason why there are tent people and people living on the sidewalk and all of that stuff that is the invisible part of living beyond your means and you I can't was keep something else. doing it so we have like four minutes but i do want to bring this up because i was talking to some people over the weekend so you know constantly you hear about the need for more affordable housing as if some developer is going to invest millions in building apartments that don't generate a lot of revenue. It's just not going to happen. But but you do wonder, like, why is it so difficult? Why are people struggling? Why can't people get into an apartment? Zoning. One, well, zoning. <laughs> but this is one of those unintended consequence things. Here in Manchester, I unless it was grandfathered, there are no more rooming houses. There are no more boarding houses. Now, I happen to live next to one that has, like, two apartments or three apartments and a bunch of rooms. I don't even know. They're fine neighbors. They're, you know, lots of parking in the back. They're clean house. It's it's fine. But you can't do that. So that person, I mean, there's a couple older guys that live there. I'm thinking, yeah, they probably live on fixed incomes. They can't afford $1,000 a month rent. Right. Nor do they need a, you know, 600 square foot apartment. apartment. They need some place to sleep, some place to cook their meal. And they live in this boarding house. They have a nice little backyard. They have privacy. It's all great. Except for we, we've got ordinances that say, oh, but you can't have those. So how many of these big apartment buildings or even like, you know, a three decker that has three bedrooms in each floor, if there's sufficient parking, if it's kept, why not? Oh my, don't even get we me started on the so sufficient parking thing because, mm. you know, if you try and do anything where they're saying you have to have two and a half parking spots per unit in Manchester and I'm like aren't we moving towards models no, where we're gonna have less cars we because we're gonna have uber and yeah, we're gonna I have all these I things just and we, it's just I, I lived in a very tight tight neighborhood that had um I had driveway I had plenty of off street I mean parking. if I was young now I probably wouldn't buy a car I if I lived Depends in the city you, well, I would have where you work and everything well maybe yeah. well yeah but I mean okay fair enough because you know if you, you know, work I, in Concord I think, you need a car if sure you work in but if Auburn, you but you need... if you work from home yes you could you and uh, those you are the probably folks, don't need a car those are anymore. the folks that aren't looking for low income housing they're looking for upscale milliard housing and downtown housing so that they can be close to the services that they want they want to be able to walk to a restaurant and eat dinner sure fair. i mean no. but but i do think it's fair to say that more regulations make things more expensive well, which is why we can't afford anything they, so when people look at this problem and they look at the market and they go why don't we have yeah. this stuff it's like we would have them but for the government getting in the way and making things yeah. more because there's expensive. always unintended consequences to any regulation that's put in place and, and then you say well oh crap i didn't think that would work that way anyway it's hot out there. Um, the sprinkler place, the splash pad at DuPont's open, Crystal Lake's open, um, Hunt Pool, which is the one near Gill Stadium, is open. Um, yesterday, I know they had the sprinklers on over in my neck of the world because, you know, West, West Manchester kids have to go someplace too. Um, so do yourself a favor. If you can get to the uh, body of water and take a dip, do it. Be safe. Don't, don't jump in the Merrimack River and drown or anything crazy <laughs> like that. Um, otherwise... We'll be back next week. Um, if you have any questions, you have any ideas, you have any subject matter that you're dying to hear us talk about, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and one of us will get back to you or we'll add it to a future show. That's all we got. Thanks, we'll guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.